Hey there, and welcome to a rare non-Brexit related TLDR video. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at why student loans are such a mess here in the UK. All of us here at TLDR are either just out of university or still studying. So it's an issue that's close to home for us, and hopefully something that's still interesting to you too. Before we get started, and to help us repay our student loans, I'd like to ask you to check out our pin badge store. We've recently updated the store to include all of the Season 2 badges, including five previously unannounced badges. Estonia, India, Belgium, New Zealand, and the UK and EU together. A bunch of you have pre-ordered Season 2 badges already, and good news, we have those items in stock now. Bad news is, I'm currently in Italy when this video is released, but we'll get those orders shipped out as soon as possible. To order these designs or any of our others, head over to our store, tldrnews.co.uk forward slash store. So student fees were first introduced in 1998 under Tony Blair's new Labour government. Until then, universities were funded solely through general taxation. Depending on parental income, after 98, students were required to pay up to £1,000 per year, and in 2006, this was raised to £3,000 per year. Under 2006 rules, unpaid debt would then be subject to an interest rate of either Retail Price Index, RPI, or the Bank of England's base rate, plus 1%, whichever ended up being lower. So for example, if RPI was 3.3%, but the Bank of England's rate was 0.75%, as it is now, your debt would have gone up by 1.75%. Once you've left uni, assuming you still had some student debt, you pay back 9% of everything you earned over £15,000 a year. So let's say that you earn £20,000 straight out of uni. You'd have to pay back 9% of that extra £5,000, which would come in at £450 per year. You continue paying back at this rate, or more if you wanted, until 25 years have passed, at which point all of your remaining debt would be written off. Anyway, so a big change came in in 2012 under the coalition government. As well as increasing the costs of university to £9,250, the government decided to change maintenance grants to maintenance loans, increase the length of time you'd be required to pay back from 25 years to 30 years, and raise the payment threshold from £15,000 a year to £25,000 a year. They also, more importantly, decided to change the interest rates on student loans. Now this might sound a bit boring, but trust me, it's worth paying attention to. So now, instead of the lesser amount between the Bank of England plus 1% and RPI, the interest rate on student debt became RPI plus 3% while you're a student. So now for the three or so years you're at uni, your debt is increasing at 6.3%, because the current rate of RPI is 3.3%. That's an insane rate, especially considering that the Bank of England rate is only 0.75%. This means that the rate your student debt is increasing by is literally eight times faster than the Bank of England's base rate. And that's not helped by the fact that RPI isn't a great measure of inflation, with the Office of National Statistics dropping the measure way back in 2013, describing RPI as a very poor measure of inflation. To put this in perspective, according to the IFS, the average student leaves university with £50,000 worth of debt, and looking at my paperwork, that seems pretty consistent. To pay off just that added interest on the £50,000, you'd need to be earning £60,000 a year straight out of uni. And even at that rate of pay, you'd only be paying off the interest, not the actual loan. So what does this actually mean? Well, it's a huge advantage to wealthy students. If you can afford to pay off the debt immediately, you avoid getting in the trap of paying off extra interest. In fact, even if you can't pay off the debt immediately, the current system still advantages wealthier students, something that the government's reports even confirm. According to the current system, if you go straight from uni into a higher paying job, like a lawyer, which allows you to pay off your student debt in 9 years, you'll end up paying a total of about £70,000. If you become a teacher, you'll likely be trying to pay it off for the full 30 years, and by the end of that time, you'll have paid more than £100,000 according to the government's own figures. That's right, you'll be poorer, and you'll have paid £30,000 more. Also, most graduates won't even be able to fully pay off their loans. In fact, the IFS estimate that a staggering 83% of graduates won't be able to pay it off fully. And that's for two reasons. 
The first is obviously the insane interest rates we've already mentioned, but the second is a degree doesn't guarantee great employment like it once did. That's because a university degree isn't worth anywhere near what it used to be. This is really worth explaining, so bear with us as we go through it. Today there are five times more graduates than there were in 1990, and ten times as many master's students. Amongst undergrads, 29% get firsts, four times higher than 7% back in 1994, and 79% get firsts or two ones, and that's up from 47%. This means there are 20 times as many graduates coming out of uni with firsts as there were in 1990. There are two possible explanations for this. Either university standards have dropped, or they're the same, but undergrads are way smarter than they used to be. Spoiler alert, they're not. <laughs> In fact, according to internationally standardised tests, such as IQ tests and standardised numeracy and literacy tests, UK students currently are almost exactly as clever as they were in the 1980s. So why are grades becoming so inflated? Well, it didn't always used to be this way. In 1963, LSE professor Lionel Robbins published a seminal report on the function and importance of universities in society. Although he was an otherwise passionate, free marketeering neoliberal, Robbins suggested that universities should be government funded and expanded, but that academic standards had to be upheld. Upon publication, the government accepted the report's proposals, and more universities were opened and spending increased, so that by 1980, spending per student was 50 times higher than it was in the 1960s. To uphold academic standards, these new universities weren't allowed to issue their own degrees. Their students had to sit exams set by Durham and London, which often in turn were moderated by Oxford or Cambridge examiners. This meant that the value of a first was essentially tied to Oxbridge students. Only after universities had proven their conformity and commitment to upholding academic standards were they allowed to give out their own degrees, and this took a while. For example, Nottingham, which was founded in 1881, had to wait 67 years until 1948 before it was allowed to give out its own degrees. Then in 1992, John Major decided to turn all polytechnics into universities. Previously, polytechnics offered shorter, more vocational courses, but they didn't have the power to give out degrees. Major changed all of them, as well as some other unis, into proper universities, with the power to give out degrees, basically doubling the number of degree-giving universities overnight. Immediately, degrees lost their value, simply because everyone was able to get one. Major basically did this because he wanted to say that more people were going to university under his government, even if that was just because he'd essentially redefined the word. Anyway, so this became a glaring issue by the time that Blair got into office. However, he didn't want to reverse any of the changes, because it would have meant that less people were going to university, which wasn't a good look for the government. So instead, he introduced the Quality Assurance Agency. In theory, the QAA was supposed to do what London and Durham universities did back in the 70s, guarantee that a first-class degree actually meant something. However, in reality, the QAA has done, well, nothing. The QAA doesn't actually measure or enforce standards, and in its own words, we aim to ensure that institutions have effective process in place, but we do not judge the standards themselves. So by this point, university standards were already slipping. However, everything became infinitely worse with the advent of league tables and student fees. Introduced in 1993, there are basically three main university league tables in the UK. The Times, The Guardian, and The Complete University Guide. Again, in theory, these are a good idea, but they've had some disastrous consequences. University league tables use metrics like student satisfaction and employment prospects. Universities realise that both of these can be artificially boosted by giving more students higher grades. Doing this meant that more students were getting good jobs straight out of university, and because of that, they were giving their universities higher satisfaction scores. So because of this, universities are now encouraged to give their students increased grades. Tuition fees were the final nail in this coffin though, because once universities became dependent on 18-year-olds for their funding, they had basically no incentive to maintain academic standards. All that mattered was getting a good ranking on the league tables, to attract as many students as possible. 18-year-olds not knowing the intricacies of grade inflation are obviously going to be more attractive to universities that give out a higher percentage of high grades. 
Anyway, so that's why university degrees often don't mean as much as they used to. But quickly back to the topic of this video, tuition fees. So you've got student loans with insanely high interest rates and degrees that don't guarantee solid employment. What does this mean? Well put simply, that leaves you with a whole load of graduates who aren't able to repay their student loans. And that's where things get really interesting. And even if you're not a graduate, this should still affect you. That's because all of this unpaid student debt gets written off 30 years down the line, and that money is going to land with the taxpayer. As we said earlier, the IFS estimates that 83% of all grads aren't going to be able to fully pay off their student loans, and this number is constantly increasing. In fact, in 2011, the government said that it expected to pay for 30% of all student loans. Now it estimates that the taxpayers will have to pay for 54% of all student debt. Student loans currently come to about £105 billion a year, or 5% of GDP. By 2040, it's expected to be £460 billion, or about 10-12% to of GDP, according to the Department of Education. This means that taxpayers are going to have to pick up this absolutely huge bill in 30 years time, and it's only getting worse. In fact, it will probably end up being even worse for the taxpayers than if they continued paying directly for university tuitions, in part because of the incredibly high interest rates we've talked about, and also because the new system encourages universities to take in far more students than they would have done otherwise. This means that the system has failed its primary aim, to lighten the load on the taxpayer especially the non-graduate taxpayer. Anyway, that's why tuition fees and the university system more generally are such a disaster. Let us know your thoughts on the system in the comment section below. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel if you want to be kept up to date with our content, and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified every time we release a video. If you want more from us, you can find us across all social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. And if you want your names to be featured at the end of the videos just like these people, then be sure to check us out on Patreon, there's a link to that in the description.